Good morning. I'm Kenneth Moten. And I'm Janae Norman. Here are the top five things to know this Thursday. Number one, the public impeachment hearings now set to begin next week. William Taylor, the top U.S. diplomat in Ukraine, will be the first witness next Wednesday. Taylor says President Trump blocked military aid to Ukraine while requesting an investigation of the Bidens. Meanwhile, sources say Attorney General William Barr refused a request from President Trump to hold a news conference and say Trump broke no laws during his call with Ukraine's president. Number two, the breaking news overnight and the trade war with China. The U.S. and China have reportedly agreed to what's being called a phased cancellation of tariff increases. That's because of progress being made in trade talks. Of course, whether those tariffs are lifted permanently depends on negotiations moving forward. On to number three, winter arriving early for millions of Americans. A nasty pre-winter storm has dumped snow across the upper Midwest and sent temperatures plunging into the 20s and 30s. And later today, the flakes will be flying in parts of interior New England, which could see up to six inches before the bitter cold Oof. moves in. Number four, the murder suspects who escaped from a jail in Monterey, California last weekend have been captured. They were taken into custody while walking across the Mexican border into the U.S. They, and there's no word how they first got into Mexico. The two broke out of jail Sunday by escaping through a hole in the bathroom ceiling. And finally, number five, a college junior in Nevada got the chance of a lifetime, sink a basket, and avoid student loans for the rest of school. He had to make this half-court shot to win free tuition. Bam. You see right there, he did it. A bank sponsored the contest with the University of Nevada, Reno. He was randomly picked from the crowd. Turns out he wasn't even planning to attend the game, but his friends convinced him to go. I'm sure he's so glad he did. What are the chances? Yeah. What are bad. the chances that you don't have the ABC News app? Because you should get it for all the trending stories. Nice segue. Good Thursday morning, everyone. Guess who's back? Back again. Janae is back. Tell a friend. She's all comfortable mm -hmm. on our new set. Yeah. Up. I'm loving it. New set up. New set up. New set up. Yep. Great to have you back. Thanks. Um, we've been talking about impeachment all this week, and that is still our big story today, the impeachment battle which is now going public. Democrats now say public hearings will begin next Wednesday. The first witness to be called Bill Taylor, a career diplomat with 50 years of public service. Meanwhile, overnight, we learned about a new request President Trump made to Attorney General William Barr. ABC's Karina Mitchell joins us with the new details. Good morning, Karina. Good morning, Kenneth and Janae. Well, House Democrats are promising Ambassador Bill Taylor's televised testimony is just the beginning as the inquiry probes President Trump's alleged effort to pressure Ukraine into investigating political rival Joe Biden and his son. West Point grad and Vietnam veteran Bill Taylor, the acting U.S. ambassador to Ukraine, will be the first to testify publicly in the impeachment inquiry, telling millions of people what he told investigators, that the president withheld hundreds of millions of dollars in military aid to the U.S. ally. His transcript released Wednesday reveals he grew so concerned over the issue, he sent a rare cable to Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, but received no response. Most important facts are largely not contested. During a rally in Louisiana overnight, President Trump fired back. Democrats must be accountable for their hoaxes and for their crimes. Really, I mean, do you believe what's going on in Washington with these do-nothing somewhat evil and in some cases very evil people. Also testifying next week, former Ukrainian ambassador Marie Yovanovitch. One Republican says none of the evidence points to corruption. There are perfectly appropriate quid pro quos and there are inappropriate quid pro quos. This morning, there are new details about the president's actions just as the Ukraine story first broke. Multiple sources tell ABC News that the president wanted Attorney General William Barr to hold a news conference, saying that Trump didn't break any laws regarding that July call with Ukraine's president. But Barr reportedly declined. The White House, while dismissing the hearings, is raising its defense, adding two longtime Trump allies to its team to come up with a better strategy of pushing back. Kenneth? All right, Karina Mitchell, thank you. In the meantime, Republican Senator Rand Paul is blocking a resolution that would reaffirm the Senate's support of whistleblower protections. Paul has called for the whistleblower at the heart of the impeachment inquiry to be named publicly. 
Instead of backing the whistleblower resolution, Paul spoke in support of his own bill that would give the president the right to face his accuser. And a bill that would make animal cruelty a federal felony is now on President Trump's desk. The Senate unanimously supported the so-called Preventing Animal Cruelty and Torture Act, which the House had passed last month. The bill is aimed at increasing penalties for people who make videos showing animals being abused. Those penalties would include fines and up to seven years in prison. Kentucky Republican Governor Matt Bevin is asking for a re-canvas of voting totals in his race for re-election. Bevin is more than 5,000 votes behind Democrat Andy Beshear. Following Tuesday's election, he's seeking a check of the vote count to ensure the results were added correctly. That check will take place a week from today. A re-canvas has never led to a reversal of a Kentucky election result. We turn now to the Twitter employees accused of spying for Saudi Arabia. Federal investigators say the Saudis recruited the men to keep track of people criticizing the kingdom online. This morning, two former Twitter employees are accused of spying for Saudi Arabia. The men allegedly used their access at the social media giant to gather sensitive and personal information on critics of the Saudi regime. The goal, according to the complaint, was to find information that would give up a user's location. This ought to serve as a wake-up call to not only Twitter, but all the big tech companies. They've become large and powerful, and they are up against highly complex spy operations. One of the men, a U.S. citizen, is already under arrest. He was allegedly paid $300,000 by a person identified only as Foreign Official One to access users' private information. The other former Twitter employee, a Saudi citizen, obtained the Twitter data of more than 6,000 Twitter users, including at least 33 usernames for which Saudi Arabian law enforcement has submitted emergency disclosure requests to Twitter. Authorities also charged a third man, a Saudi citizen who did not work for Twitter. The case marks the first time federal prosecutors have charged Saudis with deploying agents inside the United States. According to prosecutors, the Saudi government recruited the men because the Saudi royal family grew frustrated by growing criticism of its leaders on social media. The foreign affairs element to this story is going to grow. The allegations come a year after the execution of Jamal Khashoggi, the Washington Post columnist and critic of the Saudi government killed in the Saudi consulate in Turkey. The Saudi royal family has denied killing Khashoggi, despite the CIA finding the assassination was directly ordered by Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. It's clear that the Saudis were looking for information to punish people speaking against them, not just in the terrible, brutal murder of, of Mr. Khashoggi, but in the form of suppression. Two of the suspects are believed to be in Saudi Arabia. The Saudis have not commented on these allegations. Twitter says it's cooperated with the investigation. Well, police in Columbus, Ohio, say a six-year-old boy brought a loaded semi-automatic handgun to school. They say another child saw the gun in the boy's backpack and told school staffers the weapon belongs to the boy's grandfather, who had reported it stolen. For now, police say they are not pressing charges. Unfortunately, with a child of six years of age in the first grade, um, criminal intent is hard to articulate. In this case, it follows that exact same pattern. We really don't know why the kid brought the gun to school other than show and tell or, or bragging or showing off. Police praised the child who alerted school staffers saying the student followed the rule of see something, say something. And other in health related news, scientists have discovered a new strain of the virus that causes AIDS. It's the first new strain of the virus to be identified in nearly two decades. The strain is part of the same group behind the global HIV pandemic, but health officials say there's no cause for alarm. Current treatments for HIV can be used against this strain and others. Police in New York City are investigating what may be a big drug mix up. So cops posted a picture on Facebook, look at this, saying they took a 106 pound shipment of marijuana off the streets. But the people in Vermont who grew it say it's hemp, which is legal. It was sent by FedEx to a legal CBD store in New York. Someone tipped off police who made an arrest and seized the shipment. The growers say they're out $30,000 and their business is at risk. Wow, that's a crazy story. It is crazy uh, because they're saying that it's legal, mm. and which just brings up the whole, like, the differences between hemp and Mar uh, marijuana, marijuana, which yeah. has THC, but also, right. you know, covering local news, a lot of times when there are those big bus police departments will lay it all out it to all show out. you, and, you know, they're very proud of the work they're, they've done, but in this, this one, case, it, it probably uh, moved a little too fast and should have checked. Maybe, yeah. 
Uh, we have an update now on efforts to stop the upcoming execution of a Texas man for a murder he says he did not commit. In 1996, Rodney Reed was convicted of raping and killing a woman after investigators linked DNA found on her body to Reed. But now a new witness has come forward claiming it was the victim's fiance, a former police officer, who killed her. A petition seeking a new trial for Reed has now gained nearly 2 million signatures. The support and love that's out there for me, I try not to think about being executed. If a new jury were to hear your case, what do you think would exonerate you? I know that if they were to hear this case, that this case it would, will itself exonerate me. Celebrities, including Rihanna and Kim Kardashian, have joined the movement to save Reed. For now, he's set to be executed November 20th. 13 days. Really, really, really hope that they get this one right. Mm -hmm. The University of Alabama says students will not be punished if they boo President Trump this weekend when he attends the Alabama football game against LSU. A message from Alabama student government had threatened to revoke seating at future games for those engaging in disruptive behavior. But later, that message was clarified to say students have a right to express their opinions turns oh, yeah. out that constitution freedom of speech think that's, that's a it. tricky thing there yeah. and the school day could be longer soon if some lawmakers on capitol hill get their way probably some parents do democratic senator and presidential candidate kamala harris has introduced a bill that would provide funding to extend the school day by three hours in hundreds of schools across the country the proposal has been co-sponsored by five other senators, and the goal is to align school schedules with parent schedules to lower child care costs, which is great because child care costs a whole bunch of money. But, you know, we just saw, for example, in Chicago, teachers on strike for a very long time mm -hmm. because of issues like pay. Yes, so classroom they, size, right. pay, um, a whole other host of yeah. issues. So you see something like this, and you're thinking, well, will that be mediated? Yeah. So, so. Well, coming up, the teacher rewriting the hit Lizzo song, how she's using it to inspire her students. But first, the false alarm at a busy airport in Europe that sent authorities scrambling to the scene. That story and more when we go across the pond. Welcome back. Now to the Americans caught in the middle of the Mexican drug wars. Funerals begin today for nine members of the same family killed during an ambush. Officials say it may be a case of mistaken identity, but this morning, the victim's relatives say they believe their family was targeted. This morning, members of the Mexican military are standing guard, protecting the Mormon compound an American family left just before they were massacred. Nine members of the family were killed in the attack, including six children. Officials believe drug traffickers attacked the family as they were traveling to a wedding, possibly confusing them with a the rival gang. So much more awful than we any any of us could have imagined. How, how was Kendra Miller was the bride to be in that wedding. She and other family members say they're now convinced the family was intentionally targeted to spark a new battle and the ongoing war between drug gangs. So you're saying your family was used as pawns? Yes. And what kind of men can even call themselves men that murder women and children? And they we, we believe that they did it intentionally. ABC's Tom Yamas made his way to the compound. One of the reasons why the drug cartels are so prominent in this area is because it is a remote border region. Just driving through here, as you can see, is incredibly difficult. There are never ending winding roads, mountains everywhere you look. It's so hard to get here, and that's one of the reasons why it's so hard to police. Once there, Tom found Julian LeBaron, a relative who searched for the victims after the family realized something had gone wrong. He came upon one of the mother's SUVs. She was lying on the side of the road, shot in the heart. In the passenger seat, her baby named Faith. There was a bullet hole through the, 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 um, the canopy on the, on, the, on the car seat, and we opened the canopy, and the baby was smiling at us. The Americans, who are Mormon fundamentalists, have been in this area of northern Mexico for decades, long before the drug cartels took over. Now the Mexican government says two local cartels are locked in a war. A lot of Americans are going to say, why did you guys stay living here with all this drug violence surrounding you? Well, there's a lot of goodness around us, too. I mean, uh, there's a people around us. There's beautiful people. Um, there's a lot. There's thugs around us, but... Uh, but most of the people are good people. Mexican officials are vowing to find the killers. They say they're now sharing information with the FBI. Now to Turkey, where President Erdogan has announced that the capture of slain ISIS leader Abu Bakr 
Al Baghdadi's wife saying this actually happened back in June, but they didn't make a big fuss out of it. So let's go across the pond to Bruno Robert in the London Bureau for more. Bruno, good morning. So we know Erdogan there throwing some shade at the U.S. for leading what he calls a communications campaign against and about Baghdadi's slaying. Yeah, well, I mean, it's it's the pot calling the kettle black since he's waging his own communications campaign in respect of um, revealing how much they've done to combat IS and uh, track down Baghdadi's family members. He says, actually, it's in double digits the number who've tried to cross into Turkey. Um, this, I think, ahead of his meeting uh, next week in D.C. is not a coincidence. I think he's trying to burnish his credentials after accusations that their um, uh, um, initiative, military initiative against Kurdish militia in northeast Syria could give rise to the return of ISIS, and I think he's pushing back on that. And he's trying to sort of show that they are also fighting ISIS in the region. All right, Bruno, moving on to Amsterdam and a big scare for the airport when... It seemed that a jet was in grave danger, but it ended up all being a false alarm. Well, it, it gives you some sense of just how um, heightened tensions there are after Baghdadi's killing, actually. A lot of people are expecting some sort of response by Islamic State. And I think this shows how nervous people are. But the pilot was triggered inadvertently this alarm after pressing a button in the cockpit. I suspect he was trying to press a button to clean the windows or something and uh, instead pressed a hijack alarm and triggered this extraordinary response in Schiphol Airport. Armed guards, the airport was in lockdown. But it does show that there are systems in place. So I suppose in some senses it's reassuring that this is what happens when this sort of thing is triggered. We can feel a bit safer perhaps. Um, before you go, Bruno, New Zealand has passed a law aimed at fighting climate change, but there is a moment that's getting some Attention when a young lawmaker apparently clapped back at the opposition. So what did she say? Well, she was it was during a debate. She was being heckled and she turned to the person heckling her and was like, OK, boomer, I think you can see it now. In the year 2050, I will be 56 years old. Yet right now, the average age of this 52nd parliament is 49 years old. OK, boomer. Uh, current political institutions have proven themselves incompetent. I have to say, I, <laughs> I was slightly uh, subconscious about this being a, a sort of a, a boomer myself. So I think there's terrible uh, age discrimination embedded within this comment. What's happened to the time when being old was respected? I mean, frankly, being old and alive was something that people used to value in the olden days. No such uh, respect due from the younger generation. Snowflakes, as they're known by certain people, which I think is rather unfair. So perhaps this is a tit for tat war of old versus young. Oh, Boomer, we appreciate people who can get old gracefully. Uh, we weren't going to call you out for being a Boomer or anything, though. Um, There's a lot of respect for you, Bruno. There certainly Thank is. You. But, you know, as to I do, be as fair. I do for young people, let me tell you now. You know, go, go young people. Go young people. Go young people. Go. To be yeah. fair, Boomer, you know, millennials face a lot of challenges out there. <laughs> Student yeah, yeah, loan do, debt, right? employment, yeah. you know. It, Except, by, I have to say, by any measure, let's face it, you're also better off than you've ever been. You can live a longer life. I mean, there are, there are some downsides, the but there are lots ends. of upsides as well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, Bruno. <laughs> Bruno, I will say, don't uh, take offense to it. I, know, I understand what you're saying about, because uh, there's a big serious debate going on about the OK Boomer. Um, some will say that we have taken it too far and it was just made to be a joke. But I do also see there's some valid points in there. And I would never want to disrespect Bruno because oh, Bruno, Bruno, we are a, we are well, huge fans. We are of such you. fans. Oh, well, thank you. We thank saw you, you in a and cave I, with your sons. We um, loved like, it. Uh, <laughs> what, like Double the other week? all of them. Go yep. check out Bruno Rover's uh, Instagram because well. it is fantastic. But bless you. Um, like, can I just say one thing? I also I think what it is all about is about being a human being, being an old human being, or being a young human being. Either way, we all share. We have more in common than we do um, difference, and I think that should be celebrated. You're there you go. Right what a takeaway from Bruno Rover Good there. Good message. Thank you for joining us this morning. Good Bruno. to see you, buddy. And so that's our question of the day. What do you think of the OK Boomer response? Tell us in the comments. Tweet us at ABC News Live. We want to hear from you. OK, so let's check our notifications, <laughs> starting with Bigfoot, who apparently has gone missing. Yep, in Boynton Gone Beach. missing. Is that what you're saying? Gone missing. You don't go missing. It vanished. It disappeared. All right. Yes, that's what we learn in, Local in Florida. Yeah. <laughs> uh, police in Boynton Beach, Florida, are looking for an eight-foot statue 
of the mythical Sasquatch. Stolen from in front of a mattress store. Also in Florida, Bill could require couples to read a guide before getting married. Yeah, they're going to put the us. cost of divorce. I know. All it's that. costly, especially in Florida, apparently. It's a big state. Got a lot of people getting married, apparently, on a whim. Is it more Maybe. expensive than marriage, than the wedding? I what, divorce? Depends. Depends on the person. Yeah. How costly. Well, if you're invested, just take the right steps before, right? Right. That's what I need to make you. Mm -hmm. Next to what the kids would call a major flex by Jay-Z. Gearing up for his annual Sean Carter Foundation. This show's really hip today. It really is. Um, so he's Sean Carter. He has his big foundation gala. Um, and so Jay-Z has actually opted to skip the embossed stationery for his invited VIP guests. Instead, as invitations, he sent out $40,000 gold Rolex watches. Rapper Meek Mill shared this image on social media saying, quote, this rich blank is getting out of control. Uh, by the way, all proceeds from the event will go to Jay-Z's newly launched scholarship fund. Uh, you do you, Jay-Z. You do and you. And doing good things. Next, ready, set, T-Rex. These dinosaurs raced at an animal sanctuary in Australia, built as a compassionate alternative to the famous Melbourne Cup horse race. They also race on roller skates. Pretty cool. And a teacher in Northern California has turned an adult breakup song into a viral video starring her second graders. Dorothy Mallory says she fell in love with Lizzo's Truth Hurts over the summer and decided she could use it to inspire her students. So Mallory rewrote the very adult lyrics, taught the new words to her class, and came up with this. I don't know what they're saying, but I'm sure it's cute. <laughs> right. Yep, I agree. Mallory's version has positive messaging about education, learning, and having each other's backs. The kids say it helps them feel loved and lets them feed off each other's energy and a lot of energy in that bundle. Mm-hmm. Yep. I got your back. Do you feel the and positive energy? It. No. The truth hurts. Let's turn now <laughs> from the streets of New York to the hockey arenas of North America. This year's hockey season already heating up. Some of the busiest people on the sidelines are the dentists. ABC's Brad Milky has that story. Brad, good morning. Hey, that's right. Hockey season is underway, which means a lot of players are out there on the ice losing teeth. In fact, already this year, a player from the LA Kings reportedly swallowed his tooth when it popped out. Every arena comes outfitted with its own dentist chair, and these dentists stand ready to work on either team. In fact, they hang out near the bench with a toolkit. Um, it, it's it's pretty medieval. I mean, it is like pliers. Uh, a file, um, a thing to scrape gums, and then... No, those... it's not ply. They have literal pliers? Well, I mean, that's that's what they look like, right? I, I It's, okay, it's dental pliers, or med would you like me to say medical pliers? But they're basically pliers. That's what they are, and then they have just loads and loads of those ginormous uh, Novocaine needles that they use to numb up players in between periods to get them back on the ice. And so the obvious question here is, why don't these guys do more to protect their teeth? I asked David why more of them don't wear mouth guards. He said well, they don't really do much except help against concussions. So if there's a puck or a stick or a fist, they really only serve as collection trays, he called them, for when your teeth pop out. We'll have a lot more on this on Start Here later this morning. It's a podcast, so don't worry, not too many pictures. Check it out on Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcasting app. Kenneth, Janae? Our thanks to Brad there. I mean, the dientes. That's Spanish for teeth. Uh, you got to take care of them, hockey players. Yeah. And they won't wear the guards. Uh, yeah, they said a collection tray. Yuck. Coming up, what will to, um, hey, <laughs> coming up, we'll tell you what to watch out for on this Thursday. <laughs> Including a big announcement from former Attorney General Jeff Sessions after this. Here's what to watch out for today. President Donald Trump is scheduled to present the Presidential Citizens Medal, the country's second highest civilian award after the Presidential Medal of Freedom, recognizing U.S. citizens who have performed exemplary deeds of service for their country or their fellow citizens. Former Attorney General Jeff Sessions is returning to the political stage after a stormy tenure in the Trump administration. He is expected to announce plans to run for his former Senate seat today. It comes on the first anniversary of his firing by Trump. He's looking to unseat Democrat Doug Jones, who defeated Republican Roy Moore in 2017. The primary is slated for March 3rd.
Chicago Police Superintendent Eddie Johnson will speak at the University of Chicago Institute of Politics. Amid reports, Johnson could resign later this week. President Trump criticized Johnson at a rally last month for the city's high crime rate under his tenure. A New York Supreme Court justice is expected to rule on whether the indictment against Harvey Weinstein should be dismissed. The film mogul is facing charges of rape, criminal sex act, sex abuse, and sexual misconduct for incidents involving two separate women. He has pleaded not guilty and maintains that any sexual encounters were consensual. Plus, don't forget to tune into the debrief for an update on all our top stories and the briefing room for a breakdown of the latest headlines in politics. Finally, from us on this Thursday morning, retirement came a little early. For us. No, not for us. Just kidding. Earlier than planned for a Texas mechanic, thanks to a gift from his boss. 69 year old Albert Brigas is now off the clock for good because his now former boss, Rudy Kionis, paid the final $5,000 left on Brigas's mortgage. Kionis said Brigas had been just like family in their 13 years together. So he offered to put up the money because he didn't want Brigas to wait any longer to retire. Very Such nice. All good and we wish him a happy, happy retirement. Hope it's the best chapter yet, just before the holidays. Yeah, Time very you. nice. And we wish you a happy day. That's it for us. That's it. See ya. Have a good one.